and what was perhaps the most impressive victory for any of the top grandmasters in the first round here at the Chess.com Isle of Man International was Vidit Gujarathi's win as black. Uh, it included so many, so many things that were a ton of fun. We're going to dive into it. You had the Twitch chat following very closely, but how does it feel okay. to get your first win? And uh, yeah, it's always nice because uh, when you start a tournament, you're like a little bit hesitant, like how will it go? You know, yeah. especially when you're black. Yeah. And uh, the the game itself, I enjoyed so much. So I couldn't, I can, can't complain. Are you more nervous in a tournament like this because it's an open and because you end up facing players lower rated, maybe more lower rated than you would if you were in sort of an invitational event, right? I'm never nervous. Well, you're going to be in one very soon, right? Uh, yeah. At the, uh, the Tata Steel India tournament, right, right? right? And you just played Wesley So and you were invited to the Speed Chess Championship. Yeah, that was fun. So yeah. you're invited to things all the time. <laughs> but All right, so let's go ahead. Take okay. me through this game and uh, your thought process and, and some really exciting moments. So right. we had... Uh, so I decided to play like solid. I didn't know. I thought he's a very aggressive player. Right. So I thought, okay, I'll just play something uh, okay. slow. Uh, C3. Okay, this is basic stuff. Yeah. I play D6. And so that was part of your plan, is that you knew he was an aggressive player. You wanted to. Yeah, take, I saw that he plays Italian, and I didn't know what I'm gonna play in Italian, which setup. Right. But uh, I didn't have any time to prepare actually, so I just decided that I'll play Italian and see how it goes. Okay. Uh, A4, A5. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be a little bit shaky um, because what he played, I mean, Bishop H4. And so you said you didn't want to get into anything crazy and tactical, but you invited, like you yeah, said, you invited this very Yeah, then I was worried that it'll just be a boring draw, you know? I mean, right. if he just stays solid. Okay. I mean, I didn't really know him well, but after the game, I know that he just likes to play very aggressive. Right. So when you play G5 here, and obviously yeah. we're about to get into this line, but you, you were clearly expecting maybe what he did. Not no? at all, actually. Oh, okay. I mean, I, this sacrifice almost never works in this right. line. I mean, there are some subtleties where, uh, I mean, it's all about tempo, like if white can get the knight to e3 or something like this. But in almost all of the cases, uh, whenever I was analyzing, I saw that the sacrifice... White doesn't have enough. Yeah, nothing, right. yeah. And so, Especially in this position, I, I didn't remember what why, but uh, I, I thought, okay, I'll figure it out. Okay. So, maybe because he's an aggressive player, he went for it, but objectively, bishop g3 was probably white's best player. Right, I mean, I didn't even think that he'll go knight g5. I right. was just thinking bishop g3, and I was thinking, how should I play, like, which setup? Right. So, he played it. Yeah. And they, uh... <laughs> it was get... not so pleasant, like, I think uh, everybody is wanting to meet me nowadays. So. Right. Why is that, you think? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have to figure that out. You got to figure out why. <laughs> a lot of people are trying to checkmate you. But all right. So part of the reason why this attack shouldn't necessarily work for white or one of the things to quickly recognize is, you know, the bishop is well placed to stop moves like f4. Right. Right. Uh, because the knight is underdeveloped, it's hard for white. You know, white needs several moves. Right. White needs positions yeah. like this. And, and so that's why you feel very confident you should be able to defend this and, and you were you were ready. Right. I mean, he needs to bring the knight one, two, three, four. Right. He needs quite two a few tempies and I just play king g8, rook h8 and okay. I'm, I think I can always play rook h6. Right. Giving up the two. Giving up the okay. rook. So that's my like, So a let's get to plan. that. So yeah. you play king g7. Queen we had queen f3, rook h8. I think the point is like um, king g6 trying to um, force. Yeah, force this. Doesn't work because I think of bishop h4. Okay. And, and then you have worries Then you have check three. and yeah. stuff like this. Now if I go rook h8, he has check and it's kind of annoying this Even setup. Even f7 is Yeah, bishop yeah. f7, okay. right. Got it. So um, that's why rook h8. Knight the knight d2. Came to d2. I mean, he, he can play knight e3 as well with the idea of knight c2. Right, they that's both have the same destination, right? The right. knight wants to get over here. Right. Okay. But okay, knight d2. Here I saw a very interesting line. I mean, I played queen e7, but king g6 was very interesting. The point is, if now queen g3, then I just play knight h5. Bishop yeah. d8 is met with knight g3, and okay, but he has a... Uh, White's no only move might be queen h4, but... But then I take... Ah, uh, you're yeah. just winning a piece yeah. here. Yeah, okay. So, h4 I thought initially, and now the king looks a bit uh, stupid out here. Yeah. But there was this very interesting line, bishop g4. And if bishop f6. Yeah, bishop f6. No, not bishop f3. That's the point. Queen d7. Ah, okay. And, and you're going to end up taking back the bishop with the king. Right, yeah, queen Amazing. g3, king f6. Suddenly the now other rook, rook is coming, over. Yeah. Okay. He has to play something like d4, but I really don't believe in it, like e d f3 and 
I think I can just take here also. Yeah. And just put the king here. I think black is just winning. So what made you decide against this move? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I thought that he will play h4 most likely. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to take the risk. Because after bishop e3, I didn't see anything clear for me. Uh, and now you're worried about the, the fact that he stepped out. Right. I mean, now he's threatening check and taking here. Right. I can't move this knight. Kay. So probably I have to play something like this. Trying to free this. But queen g3 and... I don't know, again this setup, right. which looks very ugly. So it would have been a gamble to play right. king g6. Okay. Queen, um, so queen, queen e7 seven instead. Right. h4 was very strange. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't seem necessary yet. Right, I mean, it's a weakness because in the game right. I was able to exploit it. It's a move you play when you're, you want to keep the bishop there, as you were saying. But yeah, in the yeah. game, it, it, I mean, probably he should maybe be going for the more straightforward plan. Maybe this square as well. Even d5? Yeah. Okay. But again... Now I think I can go for king g6. This was my idea. If h4, then probably the same, bishop g4. And if the same idea of bishop e3, the difference is now you can take. No, uh, right? I won't take, but I think I can just remove my knight to g4, let's say. Okay. And, okay. It's a... Uh, if I take here, I'm, I have no issues at all. And you're you're threatening yeah. actually a, maybe, maybe a quick turnaround here for black to get some attack. Right, I mean, I just saw that uh, if I get remove this knight, it'll, I'll be fine. But h4, I don't know. Uh, it looked very strange. Now, I have, I no longer have these ideas like bishop g4, but... Uh, because he takes with check. Right. Um, and now king g6 doesn't make any sense because he has already protected the right. bishop. So, time so to just develop. Yeah, just bishop d7. Usually, I mean, this would be much safer. But, uh, I mean, white has some ideas like, let's say now he wants to play d4, ed. Bishop c6 takes e5. Okay. And then my the knight queen is pinned to the, yeah your right. queen is blocking e5. Right? right. I mean I can just show. It. Yeah. And now if in in the game my bishop is here so I can take with the queen. Right. And over here my here you have to take with the pawn and here comes knight e4. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I play bishop d7. Got it. Okay. And now I really don't know what he should play. Yeah. Bishop d5 looks normal. Rook g8. Well, again, and to remind everybody, the reason why we've continued to talk about either knight a3, knight c2, knight e3, or this idea is because if white can get the knight to e3, all the threats that may happen on the king's side are stronger, and if black is ever forced to trade, you've finally got more pieces in the attack. So to understand white's goal, that's why we're trying to get this maneuver. But, of course, white didn't get it in time, but to illustrate that. So what were you thinking on bishop d5 then, just that... You knew you needed to act quickly because of this idea? Yeah, I mean, I thought once he gets knight to e3, although he doesn't have any threat, let's say, but it looks really annoying. I mean, he can move the bishop and then some knight d5 right. and, and I, just I the didn't knight really like here, it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really like it. I so, just wanted to bring all my pieces. And as we get to this critical here. moment, you were yeah. already preparing the idea you had in the game. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Be so, I could take here on d5, but... Uh, I mean, compared to the game, uh, it's much better version for white because he can just defend the spawn and right. probably stay put. Okay. All those, this also looks good to me. Okay, so to uh, obviously we've been we've been setting this up then. So yeah. you played you played rook a to g eight. Yeah. Understanding that there's really nothing for white to do other than follow through yeah. with this plan, yeah. Yeah. right? You're not going to move the bishop to avoid it. Yeah, and that's the only plan. And, and when you made this queen sack, I think that a lot of people watching these games wanted. It's a very exciting moment when someone sacks right. their queen, but two, you always wonder, you know, what was it about? What did you evaluate about how the pieces would coordinate quickly? What did you evaluate that made you so sure the pieces were better than the queen here? Uh, I mean, once my coach had told me that uh, if you see your next few moves in the position. You can assess it like you're fine at least. I mean, okay. you know what's what I would. And that's like a, a tip for sacrificing yeah. your queen or a major piece. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> not I'm not really, saying everyone general, should sack their queen, but yeah, in general, I mean, I saw that after giving up my queen, my moves are very easy. I just okay. uh, and that's because that's a sign of coordination. It's a sign yeah, of maybe having the initiative. Those right, sort of things, right? Right. Okay. I mean, the position is easy to play. Uh, I didn't know objective evolution, but I thought it's very easy to play, and that and. On the other hand, White's moves are quite tough because he's now under attack right. himself. Suddenly things change. Right. Okay. Well, that's what I was asking for, and I think that's a great piece of advice for everyone at home, that your ability to see that, one, your king will be safe, you'll no longer be in trouble, and two, right. all your next moves are much easier than White's is a good sign that you, you're making the right choice. Right. Okay. I mean, the main problem for him is now this edge pawn. I mean, if the pawn was here, 
I right. mean, White still uh, has a lot of play. Like he can take on a five, b right. four, and stuff like. Yeah, this. And, and the rooks aren't nearly as dangerous, right? Exactly. Here, here, it's it's a real problem. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now this is a big issue, and tactically also this works for me. Uh, I didn't see how he should play here. Uh, do you know what the computer says? I mean, for White. Uh, well, I know that it's it's one of those funny things where, like you said, the computer at first is nervous about giving up the queen, but the longer it thinks about the position, the more it likes black. Ah, okay. So I think uh, objectively, the computer agreed the queen sack was the right decision. So. Right. I mean, if he tries to defend g3, I was just going to uh -huh. play king f8, and now this is hanging. Right. So, if he plays king h2... I, I think the computer even starts giving lines where you go yeah. very aggressively. For yeah, some yeah, sort I, of I want to yeah. play knight g6 and yeah. uh, take on h4. I admit, I actually did not analyze deeply with the computer. I just superficially checked to make sure that it was a good sack. Right. Because before we analyzed this, <laughs> I didn't want to say, here's a great queen sack, and it turns out it's not a good idea. No, right. but the computer did agree it was good, so... So he didn't actually, he tries to run, but then you had this very quick remaneuver. So take us through what happened to the change of the rook coming to f8. Yeah, he played knight e3 and he decided to give this pawn, but right. after this I think he's just busted, I mean. Busted. Because but from a practical point of view, I guess the perspective I, is he just wanted to find some way to keep the initiative, and so he didn't want to get in a position where he was having to defend. Right, right, right. But I mean, he, he should play this, queen f6, try to... Uh, add, uh, I mean, I can't play right, rook, can't g6, play rook so g6, so rook h7, now okay. I'm threatening this, king h2. And now maybe I have a move like bishop g4, threatening to trap the queen. Yeah. But okay, I mean, if I play something like this, which looks very tempting, you know, pushing back all his pieces. And just, I have the attack, but I mean, right. I don't want to give any of my bishops. Yeah. Like, for example, if he gets this portion, I think he has very good chances to hold because... Yep. My main uh, strength is the coordination of pieces, and if right. I exchange and, and them... And your lack of control of the light squares here is right, probably right. more valuable than the rook. Right, exactly. Yeah. So maybe you should have tried something like this, you know, try to okay. yeah. take away the initiative. And so he played knight e3 uh -huh. and you took? Yeah. The point is, if he goes queen g3... Knight, I, I, you have knight g6. Knight g6, knight f5. I take, take, and I have rook h8. And the mate can't be avoided. Yep. So... I wonder, I mean, did your computer, I mean, did your opponent reveal any sort of body limit? You think he missed that idea or, or he understood? I mean, already when I took the queen, he thought for like half an hour or right, so. So, so I realized he just, that he's he wasn't just, expecting this. Yeah, yeah okay. right, right. Yeah. Okay, so after knight e3 takes, he... He played g3. He backed up. I mean, I, I could have played uh, king f8, trying to be over smart. <laughs> the idea is to play f5 and rook f4 and stuff, okay. but... It didn't really feel safe. So I well, plus at this point, you got what you came for, and you were ready to create a new, a right, new form right. of initiative, right? Okay. He, he took C1. I mean, okay, it doesn't matter now. He's I just, I really like this idea that you quickly recognized that this was now not the H file, but this was now the best place to get all of your pieces in the attack, and I think it's why yeah. the game ended so quickly. Right. Was this F5 idea? Right. I mean, if I play, I have no threat. Right. So rook F8, then I can't really avoid F5. If he plays G4, which looks really ugly, I mean, I can take. Let's say queen takes, then knight g6, knight mm -hmm. f4, and rook comes here. It's just lost. So okay, so rook f8. Yeah, okay, he played king f1. Here f5, it comes. King e1. I mean, he wants to escape, but okay, it looks a little tough. f e, king e4, d5. d5, okay. very nice, and just everybody is coming to the party over here. This yeah, if he problem. takes knight d5, I wanted to play bishop f5. Ah, uh, first. Right. Tempo. I don't want to take. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, if he plays queen c4. Well, he has to, to stay on the knight, right? Queen yeah. e2, the knight hangs. Yeah, so I take bishop yeah, f2. Take. Okay. If king f2, I have bishop d3. Uh -huh. If he plays king d2 or something. Rook h2. No, rook h2, he has rook h1 ideas, uh, which is like annoying. So I just wanted to take this uh, and finish the game. Be greedy, right? <laughs> Get more material. Four <laughs> binders for the queen. Right. Okay, very nice. So, okay, I mean, anyway, it's lost. He played queen g2. Okay, I think his point was, if I play something like this, which is quite automatic, he'll try to escape, you know. Mm -hmm. Although I get everything, like, even this. But he's escaping somehow, which I didn't really like. Mm -hmm. Okay, this should also be winning anyways. It's no matter of choice. Right. So You decided to keep it close. I mean, it's nice, no, to push the queen back yeah, and then <laughs> to the first rank, yeah. Really bring the bind e4, right? Is that what you No, I, oh, no you I took on e3. Okay. Took first. I mean, I can play rook f1, and which should also be winning, but this looks nicer. Now, he can't really avoid rook f1. King e2, only way. Bishop g4. King. No, if he goes d2, yeah. I have check. Right. Okay. E4. Now e4. Now I bring the knight. 
D4. Okay, now not a single piece is moving. Rook F3. Yeah, this was fun, yeah. fun to watch. <laughs> just knight F5. I mean, I can probably just waste tempi as tempis as well. It's that running. Played c4, trying to make an escape, but okay, knight b4, king d2. I mean, now there's really no point in showing variation because I think it's just. Well, uh, at this point is when everybody was calling for the head of the king, right? Where's the yeah, mate? Yeah, yeah. Where's I, the I, mate? I was and also uh, well, looking for the mate. I mean, it would be so, nice to meet him. Uh, Grandmaster Robert Hess came in and joined me uh, for. I was I was watching this in this game and I kept yeah. and he was looking over my shoulder and I'm like I'm looking for the mate I couldn't see the mate either I just ah, okay. was that forcing myself to just like no engine I'm like where's the mate where's the mate and I couldn't find it but eventually we did we did spot something down the road but okay. so rook came in he has to take and get out no if he takes uh, I just take with the knight with the check so he played king b three uh, king b three and then rook c three rook c three so, yeah. right. Rooks then takes. Three. Yeah, I mean, I can play this also, but I wanted to somehow find a mate. Like, I wanted to force yeah. things. So, DC. And you were on the path. D king takes six. And it's everywhere, it seems like the king is just barely just, escaping. Yeah, barely. barely. Yeah. I mean, I saw many wins here. Bishop e6. Right. Okay, now the king and the king can't, can't come to the fifth rank because the rook comes back. I mean, not immediately. I take first and then. Take first and rook f5 is mate. If I take, he takes queen f2. I have bishop d7, king a5, knight c6. I mean, it's a nice line. I mean, yeah. So I can just show Bishop d7 king takes. Knight nice I mean, c6, king b5. Rook b3. Rook b3, king over bishop b6. And then it's mate. d5 and mate. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I was just hoping for all the mates, but he right. escaped, you know. Okay, so that was one line, right? The yeah. other mate. Uh, what happened? Yeah, bishop b6. Played bishop b6, d5 takes. King d4. So I, mean, I, I was looking for the knight f5 mate. King c5, I didn't see how I made Yeah, knight f5, king c5, b6, king b5, knight d6. Ah. It's okay. one mate. No, king e5, knight f5, king e5. And then, yeah, that was the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So first, first that was the, and so Robert and I were both looking and we were convinced, okay, we found it. Oh, wait, the king can come to e5. So then uh, you played the... Knight c2. Knight c2. Yeah. I mean, if he takes rook c2. I rook, rook d3 d3 in a missile, yeah. This, and then I can select between two mates. Yeah. Not sure which is better, <laughs> but right. Okay. So knight c2. He had to run. King c5. And we were salivating here for the mate. Okay. You took. Yeah. This. Okay. I think rook f5 is also winning, but rook f6 is mate, I think. Rook f6 was. Rook f5, I'm threatening this kind of mate. Right. But okay. g4, rook g5. And I thought he has to give up a queen, take on c2, and okay, I just take the queen and win. Right. But I thought, okay, I should mate him in this position. Right. Rook f6. And you were, so you were still at this point not settling on anything yeah. but the mate. Yeah. Uh, king he, and, and this is where you had it. So do you want yeah. me to let you... Yeah, so, feel the pain, yeah? No, I'll let, I'll let you <laughs> figure. This is the only place where I knew the mate that you didn't go for it. So you took, yeah. which feel like, okay, that was like, you're getting to time pressure. You're finally... Yeah, it was the 48th I'm move and I didn't want to... I'm just going to win, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to mess it up on the 48th right. move. So I just took it. So, and but the but the mate was E3, E3 yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's so pretty. I mean, and of course, you, you could play rook b6, which also... Yeah, but then queen b6. Right, you didn't want to yeah. go for that, yeah, right? Yeah. So... Okay, but e3, and the, and the point is that if any other move is played, the threat now is officially rook b6, and knight c6 is mate, Yeah. right? And if the king comes back, rook c6. we repeat and get the, get, finally get rook a6. So. Or the b6. Yeah. Right, or b6, right? Or rook c5. Picking your, picking your flavor, <laughs> yeah. So e3 yeah, would have been nice. Would have yeah. forced the... I guess they could avoid mate for a few more moves, right? Yeah, but... Okay, but, yeah. okay well, obviously you took and went on to win. I spoiled the nice game. Quite, <laughs> quite the nice game. So finish, finish it off so that everyone can see how you did it. King takes. King f7. I mean, I just get out of the pin. Right, you were G4. just getting out of it. Bishop f3, g5, rook no, f5. No, not g5. He played c5. Because uh, now my threat is rook b6. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. C6, so he played c5. I was c5, knight c6. And then king b5, bishop, bishop out. Yeah. And finally. Finally, a mate, yeah. Mm -hmm. was, uh, were you happy that, he, that it was played out to mate? Yeah, because I don't remember meeting anyone yeah, well, in this, the recent times. It doesn't yeah. happen very yeah, often, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so indeed. took us a long time, but you did eventually uh, get the mate. And honestly, it was a brilliant game, at least a ton of fun to follow. So uh, love the tip you gave, and everyone can take that take that home about how to evaluate those types of material imbalances and what you went for in the queen sack. And right. uh, 
congratulations, great start. And Thank how you. did you enjoy playing uh, now that we have you? The Speed Chess Championship, you just, you just suffered the loss to Wesley, yeah. but it was a great match. And yeah, now that the, you've had a few days to think about it, any takeaways from that? Yeah, I thought a lot about it actually. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, made few blunders. I mean, that really cost me the game because he had like two or three points lead. And if yeah. I had. It wasn't much. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I blundered in some winning positions. So yeah. the score would have been completely different yeah. if I didn't. So you're, you're accepting your invitation to next year's event in advance. Already, I can sign the contract. Oh, already, you can sign the contract. Well, we, we look forward <laughs> to having you again. Congratulations on the good start. Thank and you. hopefully, hopefully, we see uh, more, great, more great games this year. Thank you.